This little Rolo 35 has been sitting on my shelf for a while now. It's a tiny 35mm camera that was one of the smallest in the world at one point. I recently had a chance to take my car to Goodwood Race Circuit and thought it might be a nice opportunity to dust off the Roli and take it out for a spin too. I'll sprinkle in a few of the photos from Goodwood throughout this review so you get a flavour for how the camera performs in a real world situation. Roli have been making the Roli 35 since 1966, initially in Germany, after which production was moved to Singapore. The earlier German models feature Zeiss made glass, are slightly more desirable and a little more expensive. However, there is nothing wrong with the Singaporean versions, which were clearly manufactured to nearly identical specifications. These are very popular little cameras with a big fan base and plenty of guides, history and reviews out there if you want to know more. I was lucky to pick up this near mint 1973 copy cheaply on eBay from a seller that couldn't spell Roli. He got the E and the I the wrong way round which meant this one snuck under the radar for a fraction of the normal cost. That can be a good tip if you're looking to pick up certain cameras. Always search for variations of their names. It also works with Voigtlander too, as very often people add an erroneous H between the G and the T. In the hands, the Roli is small, heavy and solid, with a quality mostly metal construction. It's a viewfinder camera, so you will need to have some kind of external rangefinder or zone focus, but there is a built-in light meter that works off a now discontinued Mercury battery, Mine seems to work fine with the modern equivalent though. The self of the meter is on the top right of the camera, which is where your hand sit, so remember to make sure your fingers are well clear before taking the light reading. The shutter and aperture speeds are set on the two plastic dials on the front of the camera, which are a little finickety to change, but I suppose this is the charm of using such a small camera. In between these two dials you'll find a collapsible lens, a 40mm f3.5 Tessar in this instance, but you can also get a 40mm f2.8 sonar if you plump for the fancier Roli 35SE. There are a few other models too, but it's really either the 35 or the 35SE you want. Apart from its diminutive size, it's these sonar and Tessar lenses that are the real draw here. Whether it's the original Zeiss made lenses on the German manufactured Rolis, or the Singaporean equivalents, you will not be disappointed. They produce effortless, sharp, contrasty, highly detailed, modern looking images that need very little in the way of work in post. Unfortunately, it's being so small where the problems start to arise. Everything becomes that much more fiddlier. I've already mentioned the fiddly dials on the front and the annoying placement of the light meter cell, but there are also a few other little annoyances. There is a button to collapse the lens that is inconveniently placed next to the shutter release, so it's very easy to mix them up. The film advance crank is on the left-hand side and has a really long throw that slows down operation. The battery for the exposure meter is housed inside the camera, so if you rely on the meter and it goes mid-film, you're pretty much stuffed. I'm nitpicking, of course, but these are all things that you may want to be aware of before taking the plunge. Focusing is a little bit of a pain too. I'd normally put an external rangefinder on an old viewfinder camera, but my water meter looks and feels stupid on the tiny Rolo 35. I've been using a Bosch laser measure, the sort you'd normally use for DIY, but remember not to aim it anywhere near people. One nice touch is the distance scale on the lens. Look from the top and you're in feet, look from the base and you're in metres, so you're covered either way. I feel this camera is best suited to sunnyish days, where you can shoot at the smaller apertures. At f16 or f22 you won't have to worry much about focusing and you will still get the benefits of that super sharp lens. I can see why these cameras are so popular. It is a marvel how they manage to pack so much into such a small body and with a lens that keeps up with today's modern glass. I will say, these aren't cheap cameras. You're looking at at least £100 for a decent one, but could pay many hundreds if you go for one of the fancier German models. That's a lot of money. I much prefer little 35mm cameras from the 1950s like the Voigtlander Vito B or Vito 2A. They are almost as small, also have super sharp lenses, but with way more charm and character in my eyes, are arguably easier to use and are significantly cheaper, but then no light meter.